Do you get confused when you read the Bible? Well, you may be surprised to know that a lot of Christians get confused while reading the Word of God. Well, in today's Morning Myths, we're going to give tips on how to understand the Bible better. So are you ready? Then let's go. Good morning and welcome back to Morning Meds, where we meditate on God's word to tackle everyday issues that we face as Christians. And today we're talking about how do how to understand the Bible better. All right. And our scripture that we're using today is Psalms 119 verses 27 and 28. But before we get to that, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your grace and your graciousness. We thank you, God, for being so great in our lives. And we ask you, Lord God, to hear our prayer right now, Lord God. Hear us as we come to you as servants of you, as people who want to please you and bring your name glory. We ask you, God, to forgive us for the wrong that we've done, said, and thought. We know that without you, we are unworthy and we need you. And we need the blood of Jesus to cover us, Lord, Lord God as we are not worthy without him. We thank you, God. Bless our coming. Do not let our worship today be in vain. In Jesus' name, I pray. And don't forget that if you are enjoying Morning Meds, then you should definitely click the like button. You should share with a friend and you should also subscribe so that you don't miss when I post a video and we can make it through this life together, okay? The first thing that we want to talk about is Psalms 119 verses 27 through 28. Make me understand the way of your precepts and I will meditate on your wondrous works. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. <laughs> Now, upon reading Psalms 119, 27 through 28, there were three things that jumped out to me that we're going to use as our context for our tips today. Number one is God is the one who gives the illumination or the ability to proceed. The first thing that David says is make me, which means God has to do it. OK, even though we're bright, we're smart, we're intelligent. We cannot understand the word of God unless God allows us to uh, understand it through his Holy Spirit. That's number one. The second part of the context is the Bible does not need our interpretation. It says, make me understand the way of your precepts. It doesn't say, let me put my pieces, bits and pieces in there and make it sound good and tickle the ears. And so people want to hear more of me. That is not what. That's not what the word of God does. All right. And then thirdly is respect the Bible as God breathed. Strengthen me according to your word. We know that God created creation with a word. Okay. He said he spoke. We know that his word is powerful. So because of this, we know that, that the scripture is God breathed. I believe that it is if, uh, Hebrews 4 and 12. Uh, Second Timothy, all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness. Now that we've allowed Psalms 119 to be our context and what we receive from that context, now we'll see how we can use that in our everyday study of the Bible. So the first thing that we want to do before we even crack open the Bible is pray for illumination, for perception, honor God's word as God breathed, as God inspired, ask him for the illumination. That's your prayer. And your prayer is also for the courage to do it. In Joshua chapter one, verse eight, he says, meditate and be strong and courageous. Okay. So we want to meditate on the word, know the word, and then be courageous enough to act on it. That's number one. Number two is you must have the context. If you will check the screen for the questions that you should ask yourself whenever you read a part of scripture, who is speaking and who is the audience? 
What is this scripture telling me about God's character? What can I apply to my life? And the last part of the context that we want to definitely remember is never neglect the prepositions. We never want to neglect those words in the English language that give word the sentence substance. We know that skipping a preposition, adding a preposition, taking out a conjunction, moving a comma, read it the way that it's supposed to be read grammatically so that you can get a full understanding as it pertains to sentence structure and what the uh what the speaker is saying at that time. The next thing we want to do is break it down. Don't be a know-it-all, okay? Don't be like, oh, I used to read this scripture when I was little. Oh, it's just John 3, 16. For God so little word that he gave, that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him should not perish. I already know that. Don't be a know-it-all. You don't know, okay? Because God is the one who gives illumination, there are times where you will read one thing one day, get one thing one day, and read that same exact thing down the line or the next week and get something totally different. God's word is active and living, baby. It is a changer. So it does not get stale. It does not get old. So make sure you are taking time in the word of God to break down what the word is saying. Take small portions at a time. Do not be afraid to take one verse, two verses at a time until you can understand. That's why we have morning meds because we want to meditate on God's word. We want to give God's word time to sink in, to settle in, to take root. And the very last one is very practical. Don't be afraid to use study aids, okay? Dictionaries, journals, commentaries, articles, highlighters, use things to help you remember, jot it down. If this is your own personal Bible, don't be afraid to write down notes. God is not condemning you for writing in your Bible like your grandmama used to do at the church or like the, the usher used to do at the church. That is not how God works. He wants you to understand. He wants you to know what he wants you to know at the time and he wants you to let it sink in. So don't be afraid to write things down or highlight things or ask questions. Google it. What does the Bible say about this? What does God think about this? Don't be afraid. And with that being said, that is the end of our information. Now let's move on to how we can apply this to our lives. All right. So today's application is very similar to, la to the last video's application. Read Read, read. The enemy wants you stuck in this space of saying, well, I get confused and so I ain't going to read it. Girl, every time I read the Bible, I get tired. Everybody does. It's the attack of the enemy. But I bet you when you're doing something that you're really interested in and you want to know more about, baby, you'll be taking no dose. You'll be drinking coffee. You'll be taking uppers, downers, inners, outers. You'll be doing whatever it took to get the job done if it was something that you were truly interested in. So we got to stop the, excuse my language if this is bad, the pussy footing around and stop playing with the word of God and actually dive in and take the time and learn if that's what we want. Otherwise, stop lying and stop playing with God. Simple. All right. That's number one. Read, read, read. Number two, understand that the word does not condemn it convicts and sets free. You need to know this because it's going to pinch. When you see things in there that God says that he doesn't like and you realize that you're doing that and you kind of want to get an attitude with the Lord you and it starts turning and it, it kind of hurts your feelings a little bit, that's conviction. Welcome. But one thing that comes with conviction is correction. And another thing that comes with correction is covering. And another thing that comes with covering is love. Okay? The world cannot give you all of those things. The enemy cannot give you any of those things. He condemns. He keeps it at the forefront of your mind that you ain't no good. That's not God. So, when you read the word, know that it is for conviction and correction, for covering, and for love. That's another way that you can apply the word of God is knowing what is the point anyway. So with that being said, I will post our Bible study questions. 